In this video, we're going to show you how to use the multimeter to measure current in 123D circuits. We'll build the same circuit you see here from scratch. So I'm logged in, so the first thing I'm going to do to get a new circuit is go to the circuits icon, go to the home page, and get a new simulatable circuit. You'll notice it says loading the unnamed circuit at the bottom. So I'm going to change that name by clicking on the gear icon. I'm going to call it measuring current with a multimeter exclamation point. Then I'll go back to the simulation view. And I start with a breadboard. So the first thing I need to do is get some components. So I'll click on components plus. And I will scroll to find a battery. And I'll connect that here. I will get an LED, which I'm going to drop at the top of the screen. And I'll scroll and get a resistor. When I click on these once, they're attached to my mouse, and then I let go of them. So now I'm going to hide the components window so that I can build a quick circuit. So I'm going to put the LED right here, and I will take the resistor and rotate it. I did that by just hitting the R key. And now I'm going to connect these all together. So this is the positive terminal of the LED, and I'd like to connect that down to the positive rail, which connects to the positive terminal of the battery. And this is the negative side of the LED, which is going through a resistor, and I can connect that to the negative rail, which goes to the battery. And it's just me, but I like to color code my wires. I'll make anything that's connecting to the negative rail black, and anything connecting directly to the positive rail, I'll leave as the default red. So let's start the simulation, and the LED lights up, and it's very dim, so I'm going to lower the resistance to make the LED brighter. I will change this to 500 ohms, and the LED gets much brighter. But we'd like to know how much current is flowing it, as that's what this video is about. So let's add a multimeter. I can go to Components Plus, and I can either scroll and find a multimeter, or I can go to the search window and type M-U-L-T, and it figures it out for me. So I'll click once, it's attached to my mouse, and I think I'll put that right here. Now, to measure current, the current from the circuit needs to go through the multimeter itself. It can't just go through the LED and the resistor and back to the battery. I have to take part of the circuit out and make all of the current flow through the multimeter and then go back to the battery. So let's do that by deleting this wire and connecting there to here and then this to there. So now the current that's flowing through the LED and through the resistor is now going to go through a little wire and go into the multimeter and out of the multimeter and back to the battery. And I'm going to color code these because essentially the multimeter has no, no effect on the circuit. So it's essentially all connected to ground here. So now when I press start simulation, the LED doesn't, doesn't light up, and that's because we're in voltage mode. I need to be in current measuring mode, and we get there by clicking on this A. And A stands for amps, which are the units of current. And now the LED lights up, and we can tell that there are 14 milliamps going through the LED. So that is the basics of measuring current through one, with 1, 2, 3D circuits. Current is coming out of the battery, through the wire, through the LED, through the resistor, through the multimeter in current measuring mode and back out and into the battery. Great, that's the basics. Let's expand on this. Let's add another circuit. I'll go into Components Plus. I'll take that out. And this time I'd like to use, instead of just a simple resistor, I'd like to use a potentiometer, which is a variable resistor. Let's put that right here and I'd like another LED, and I can get one quickly by copying it. So copy, paste, and I'll put it right there. And I'll start connecting. Now, we're going to want to use another multimeter, so I can select it, copy it, paste it, and I'll put that right here. And now, just like we did with the resistor, we need the current from the potentiometer 
to go through the multimeter. So we take this center pole, connect this to the multimeter, and bring this down to the negative rail. And I'll color code these black. And then you'll notice this is a different net here. This isn't quite negative and it isn't quite positive, so I'll give it a color of blue. All right, we're ready. Let's start the simulation. And it's on again. We have our 14 milliamps going through our first LED, but our second LED doesn't appear to be turned on, even though we're set to current mode. And that's because the resistance of this potentiometer is so high that we're only getting 96.9 microamps through it. So let's stop the simulation and change the value of the potentiometer from 250 kilo ohms down to one kilo ohm. I'll start the simulation again. And now as I turn the potentiometer, we see the LED is brighter or dimmer because the resistance is going up and down, which affects how much current is able to flow through this loop in the circuit. And we can see exactly how much current because we have a multimeter showing it. Okay, let's take it one step further. Let's add a multimeter to show the amount of current that's coming out of the battery. So we'll stop the simulation, select, copy, and paste, and let's put the multimeter right there. And now let's take the battery and move it so that it's connected like this. Its negative terminal goes into the multimeter and then comes back out like so. And then we'll connect this back to the positive rail. And we'll make this black because it's negative. And let's start the simulation. And now we see proof of Kirchhoff's first law, which is sometimes called KCL, which is that all current going into a node, so all the current going into this positive rail, equals all the current going out of it. So the current is going out through these red lines into a loop here and into a loop here and through the multimeters and then back into the battery. And if you look, 7.03 milliamps and 14 milliamps adds up to 21 milliamps. We don't always show all of the significant digits, but if you look closely, you'll see that it tracks pretty well. So that is some engineering science right there. That is Kirchhoff's first law demonstrated and simulated in 123D circuits. So go ahead, you can do it yourself in 123D circuits.